This meeting is being held to both the also in person and will be filmed and recorded for live and subsequent broadcasts available through the Council's website. The Council is a data controller and under the General Data Protection Regulations in the Data Protection Act of 2019. We broadcast and record Council meetings to fulfil our public task of the obligation to enable members of the public to observe the democratic process. Data collected during this process will be retained in accordance with council published policies available to the council website. Members of the council are reminded that they should follow the council established sleeping pro protocols, including around the use of the chat facility, and that comments made from the chat facility are visible to all participants in the meeting, which may include members of the public who have also received invites to the meeting. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, do we have any apologies, substitutions, or declarations of interest? Convener, we have apologies from Councillor Nelson. We'll be substituted by Councillor Armstrong. We'll move to a roll call. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Convener. Uh, just uh, not a declaration of interest, but a declaration of connection. Uh, Director of uh, Education Marine Park, which may come in with respect to Jenny Sandra P. Okay, thanks, Marcus. You know, following councillors, please indicate they're present at the meeting. Councillor Armstrong. Present in the chamber. Councillor Brooks. In the chamber. Councillor Cassidy. Present in the chamber. Councillor Clockerty. In the chamber. Councillor Crowder. Present remotely. Councillor Curley. Present in the chamber. Councillor Jackson. In the chamber. Councillor McKay. Present remotely. Councillor McCormick. Present in the chamber. Councillor Quinn. Present in the chamber. Councillor Robinson. Present in the chamber. Are there any further declarations of interest? No. No. Okay. We want the agenda. <clears throat> Item number two is the environment and regeneration 2122 revenue outcome. In the 23 23 revenue budget as of the 30th of June 2022. Uh, he talks to us Matt. Matt. Thank you, Yvina. Yes, this is the, uh, the the first report of the new financial year. Uh, it does indeed include the outturn from 21-22 as well. Uh, we can see at 1.3 the 21-22 outturn was an overspend of £123,000. That was very close. It was within 7000 of what we had been projecting. Um, for 22-23, the overspend at the moment is projected to be £283,000, um, mainly due to a lack of income. The details in the body of the report. Now, clearly, that is higher than we would expect and how we would want to report. Um, Stuart has already had discussions with his management team with regards to areas where we can cut back and spend to try and bring this back in line. And my finance staff are, are assisting the, the services with that as well. So I would expect to bring back to the next committee a much improved position. Um, so the details in the report, I'm happy to take any questions on that, but the committee is also asked to just note the current position and also the action that, that Stuart has taken to try and address the current overspend. I'm happy to take any questions on that. Okay, thanks for that, Matt. Any, any questions or comments from Matt? Chris? Um, I don't know if we've really been directed at Matt, so I think, uh, apologies. Uh, gently, uh, sorry, paragraph 3.5 of page 3, it was just the uh, interest in, in a couple of shortfalls. 193,000 shortfall and various information income. I'm just wondering if you can give uh, an idea about what's the what's, uh, cause of that. I'm presuming that it's not the fact that there, there's a, a lot less deaths and cremations, etc. I'm just wanting to see what, what's the driver there. And also the planning income, it says the shortfall there is a sort of trend, just so we can get a, a wee brief commentary uh, exactly on that. Again, just to, to remind us and, and what we might be able to do to try and increase our planning income. Okay, thanks, Chris. Matt? Yeah, thank you, Zina. Yes, certainly the, the, the planning income is one where it's, uh, unfortunately, it's largely out with our control. It has been certainly affected by COVID. Um, you may want to give more details after myself on that, but certainly the, the planning income has been affected by COVID. We're expecting it to recover. Uh, I don't know if it will or not. Um, the cremations income is certainly is one we're, we're a bit more unsure about. It, it is under... Um, 
and I'm not quite sure why it's continuing to be under. And we're certainly looking at obviously there's a budget process going on at the moment. Um, my staff, along with some of staff, are looking at the, the trends in there over the last few years to try and get some more information on that. So I can't give you a definitive answer at the moment, but certainly the, the burials in creme income is unusual in being that low, and we're looking at that. We'll try and get some more information at the next committee if that helps. Okay, right. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, sure, just in terms of supplementary information, regards to the planning income council covered, you'll recognise that it is very much the case in the number of applications that we receive during COVID, there were lots and lots of small applications. Um, we are seeing a slight reversal of that trend, we are starting to see larger applications coming forward, but we've got to predict what we're attempting to second guess what the likely activity across the financial year is, and that's why it's a projection at this stage. Okay. Okay. Just on that, uh, is there a, a difference in the, the sort of the, the cost profile for us looking at a small planning application as to a larger planning application? I'm just wondering whether we get lots of people spending a holiday money during COVID on 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 on, on sort of planning applications as opposed to going abroad, which will, is anecdotally seems to be in the case. Did that did that cost us more work to actually more cost to actually the process? Sure. Through the container, it's very much dependent on information that the applicant submits. So if we get a clean application and all that information, it's a relatively light touch. However, if we're going to go back lots and lots of times for a small application, it can cost us as much as a light application. Yeah. Well, just on that, is there any way of recouping that cost if we do believe the applications are uh, incomplete? Through the container, no. Okay. John? Thank you, convener. If we just uh, refer to section 3.4, subsection 2, and it's the agency cost of 305,000, which requires to cover vacant posts and skills gaps. Clearly, the officers know which posts require to be filled. Uh, and from the appendices, it would appear to be a uh, technical service and road operations. If this is indeed the case, have vacancies for these posts been advertised? Is it possible to retrain our upskill staff in house, or should be looking, or should we be looking towards our youth employment program in order <coughs> that, we, that we can train the staff to the standards required to ad adequately undertake these posts? Thanks, that John. Yeah. Thank you. As with all our workforce planning, we always look where are the opportunities to work particularly with Jennifer and her team about apprentices and graduates and we would continue to do that. Um, we are, we will continue to do a recruitment if required, but at the moment um, we don't have a num too many vacancies that we are looking to fill. But as I said, we will work with Jennifer in relation to looking to grow our own where possible. Thanks, Gil. Do you want to come on that? Well? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Convener. Just on the technical services um, posts, we have actually started um, a few members of staff this month, and there's one about to start next week. And we have um, a couple of other posts that are being considered in terms of the future structure in property services. So it's part of a restructure. So th there is a plan um, um, to address uh, these vacancies. Okay, thanks, Andy. Okay, you'll be back. Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, okay. Okay, Okay, we have that. Can we that? Can we recommendations? Great. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number three is an alignment regeneration capital program progress report for 2025. Uh, Matt. <clears throat> thank you, Vina. Yes, um, again, this is the, the, the normal capital report. I think we'll find in previous committees it's rolled in with the revenue report, but it was becoming a wee bit messy and a wee bit unclear. So we'll separate it again and um, hopefully that works better for members. Um, Position at the moment at 1.4 is we're showing at a small net slippage of 133,000 pounds at this stage, which is which is um, fairly low at this stage to be honest. And the city deal is on target. I would just try and remind members, as we're doing with all sort of capital programs at the moment, of the continuing difficulties we are seeing in terms of the material supply, availability, and cost, and the, the difficulties in tendering. So. I would just maybe temper members' expectations that this year will be another challenging year for delivery of the capital program. Um, other than that, I think I'll hand over to the other people already to give their more of an update. Okay. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Convener. I'll go, I'll go first if that's okay. I mean, there's only really one brief update I was going to um, provide. 
and it really just to reflect a change in position in one of the, the kind of larger projects. So at the Ocean Terminal project, we're reporting a completion in October. It's just to advise committee that that's no longer um, possible. The contractor's currently reviewing his programme, but at the moment he, he does not have a confirmed date for the power connection um, for the facility. Um, there have been some challenges in, in respect of agreeing the way it's required. Um, and there is also an ongoing review of the interface um, by Clayport and Peel um, on, on their side of the works and how that will fit in with the building. So the, the, the programme will change. We don't have an exact date just now. Contractor is reviewing it, which is the advice committee. It will, it will not be the uh, mid October date that we've noted. Yeah, I'm saying that. Thank you, Convener. I don't really have anything to add to the report, but I'm happy to take any questions on any of the items contained within it. Okay. Okay. Anybody yeah. Thanks so much, I've got four questions and I'll, I'll put them all at once if that's um, convenient to you. Um, item, um, sorry, line 3.14, the Kilmocombe car parks. Um, yeah, we obviously welcome this um, continuous progress on these. We just wonder, there's more and more car parking being taken off the street um, due to safety issues, such like as TROs and no parkings. So I just, we just wonder if there's any date um, of progress in these car parks, but we obviously welcome the, the proposal that's before us, or not proposal, but the development that's before us. Um, question number two is referring to 3.19, and again, um, welcome the traffic camera measures. I just wonder, constituents are obviously very concerned about the Union Street Road and they're just asking about dates. So this is a great idea of when's it going to happen. And obviously I'm well aware of the financial challenges that we have and I don't know what, so what how big the envelope is and whether we can actually do it. So anything that's over an update on that would be helpful. Um, if I move to my third question at um, 3.28, and I acknowledge there's an item 13, but it's a private item. And my question is relevant to a TRO, which is in the public domain. So I'm sure legal can confirm that I can continue with my question. Um, historically, when we're looking at the development of the West Hall Street area, we've made great understanding to try and not impede current traders. It was all about doing the good thing for new traders and, and bringing it forward. Uh, unfortunately, traders have contacted us about the in weight limit, a 26 tonne, um, limit as a current TRO that's out there for public consultation. Um, officers are aware of, of this, and I just wonder if there's any update on whether the 26 tonne is going to be a requirement um, and the impact that's going to have on traders. Are we engaging with the traders to ensure that we can have a suitable outcome? And finally, um, 3.29, the Jamaica Street car park, again, welcomed that this is now opened. There is electrical charging parking spaces, which are obviously um, limited to electric vehicles, but there is no infrastructure for charging electric vehicles. So constituents are parking in these parking spaces at the moment. So technically, I would assume that breaks the rules. Can I confirm that we're not offering parking tickets to um, normal cars parked in EV spaces where there's no infrastructure to charge the car? Okay, Dale, we're going to keep you busy here. We'll start yeah. with uh, the first question the Kilmer Home Car Park. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Councillor. In relation to the Kilmer Home Car Park, we're putting this out to um, tender for design. Um, we have completed the paperwork. Um, we did go out tender previously, however, we're unsuccessful. So we are going back out to the market and we're hoping that. Um, we are successful and that can commence quickly. Um, so that will go out in September. Officers will um, have a hopefully a two week period for tender returns. And that gives us time. We'll then have an assessment period of those returns. And then we'll be able to advise on the position once we have seen their proposals of how they propose to move forward with that. In relation to the traffic calming measures, designs are underway. And until we know the extent of that design and the cost, we won't know what extent is able to be delivered within the budget. So we would hope to be giving an update on that to October committee. 
In relation to West Black Hall Street, um, the West 26 um, tonne is a requirement and officers have engaged with um, business owners, but they will continue to engage in relation to any questions or difficulties that may raise um, with any delivery vehicles. Um, and in relation to Jamaica Street, um, we would not be issuing tickets currently. Um, charging is due to commence at the beginning of October. Um, we hope that the charging um, infrastructure will be imminently put in place. However, should it not be in place, it will be able to be used as a um, usual, a normal car park space, and we will engage with colleagues in enforcement in relation to that. Thanks. Um, so the question I have is really um, a, a parallel question to one I asked at Policy and Resources last week when we talked about capital budget there. Um, based on, on, on a comment Eddie just made a few moments ago that costs are changing and things are being reprobelled all the time. And there's a lot of things here, look at the, the number of capital items that are, are, are being discussed in this paper that are being updated for us in this paper. And I think it would be naive for any of us to think that the expectations in terms of this cohort of things isn't going to change over time because of rising costs, etc. And the question that I have, and I, I'll still ask because it's a different context, is how do we manage the, the communication of that within our population, within the Abiclyde area, so that inevitable changes, inevitable reprofile doesn't become a source of tension between us as an organisation trying to do the best with the resources that we have and the people of the area that we're trying to serve. Yeah, thanks, Tahira. Um, Councillor Robertson, clearly there's a long list of projects which are, is on this uh, report and we're endeavouring to deliver that whole long list of projects. Where projects uh, go beyond the uh, authorised spend limit, we would bring that back to committee. We would try and contain it within the capital programme if we're able to do so. But if we're not able to do that, then it would be a matter for it to come back to the Policy and Resources Committee. And clearly, there is communication throughout that whole process. Um, I'm afraid that at the moment, with the uncertainty which exists, we can't second guess how things are going to pan out and we see the increase in lecturing costs and contractor availability and all these things. It is very, very challenging. Um, will we be able to deliver the whole of the capital programme that's identified for this year? I doubt it. And as a result of that, there is a potential for slippage, so that may result in some projects having to drop off the list, but we'll be back to members with options. Just to because again, I think, I think that's entirely right, and it's probably, everything you're saying, I have no reason to, to, to argue with you at all, but I just, again, I can, I can see there being potential for bad news stories in the in press or whatever, or um, the same expectations as they were, as they always had been a source of tension, and I just think we should be we should be ahead of of that, and it not be something that, that becomes a council bad story, um, as things change in Okay. Uh, John, do you want to come Thank you, convener. Yeah, I've got um, three separate questions. Um, the first one is to do with three point one one participatory budget. And included in that would be 3.16, which is the footways. I noticed there that one of the footway resurfacing schemes was Shore Street, Gurok, between John Street and St John's Road. As we are all aware, at the junction of Shore Street and John Street, there is a dangerous building which has been cordoned off. But according to 3.16, this footway resurfacing has been completed. Now, I haven't been down that area uh, just of late, so what I wish to know is, did the resurfacing stop short of the dangerous building? And should the well-documented issues in respect of this building be resolved, will the balance of the footway be resurfaced? The second question is to do with 3.31, which is the town and village centres. Is there any indication when a proposal will be submitted for Invercap? And the final one is 3.36, which is the sea walls and retaining walls. I noticed there that, that there is a mapping exercise of the council assets. Is there any timescale for the completion of this mapping? 
Okay, thanks, John. Here we want to participate in the budget committees. Yep, thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Convener. Um, Councillor, I'll have to check exactly what extent um, we could only do what was safe to do. So I'll get an update from the team about what was um, considered safe to uh, resurface the extent to. And I will um, come back to you if that's okay. Okay, no. Yeah. Yes, you'll watch me. That's obvious. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sure. Thanks, Camilla. Um, the intention for Crowder is for the £25,000 that's allocated against Inverkip and Weems Bay to be uh, made available to ideas from the Inverkip and Weems Bay Community Council. Unfortunately, there hasn't been engagement with them yet, but that will take place. Okay, Stuart. Okay, Stuart. That's very nice, lovely. Thank you. And the problem with the sea walls. Uh, our time scale for the, the checking the sea walls. Yeah, thanks, Councillor. Yeah, and Councillor, um, unfortunately, there isn't a time scale for that, and, and we're very much um, balancing our resources. And it's not just in the technical side, because there's legal input required internally and externally to, to do that exercise. So I'm afraid we don't have an exact time scale. It is an ongoing program. Okay, Eddie, that's been absolutely late. I know that uh, through and through the likes of the title deeds, if they can, one, it can be very time consuming, and two, it's quite complex. That's fine, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. No, thanks, Michael. Uh, just maybe I've got a couple of comments to everyone, just to everyone, uh, with respect to that. I'll maybe touch on the, the, my last one first, which is about just the sea walls and the walls before going further. Uh, can officers confirm if you have a completed asset register for it? I think probably from what uh, Eddie was saying there, we probably don't, uh, just to see where we've actually got the, the liabilities, etc. Yeah. So you can, so you can be there. No, that's the that's the purpose of the mapping exercise. So that we, there are obviously assets that we have, we know are ours, but there, there is a number of areas that it's less than clear. And even going through some of the legal process, it remains <laughs> less than clear sometimes as well. So. It is a, an ongoing challenge. Uh, yeah, and just uh, on the Everbody Traffic Study, 3.12, uh, uh, I welcome this also. I'm surprised the officers think it's going to be quite a wide ranging study. It's going to enable us to maybe add quite a lot of value. It's something I've probably been pushing through the budget process on six, on, unsuccessfully for a, a number of years. So I'm glad to see it's happening. I'm a wee bit disappointed if we have no returns from traffic study consultants. I'm just wondering if uh, if officers can give some uh, some uh, commentary on that, whether or not we, we need, uh, what's the issue behind that, whether or not we have to go back out to the market again. Yeah. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Councillor. Um, the consultancy market is very busy at the moment, and we've found with a number of different procurement exercises that have been carried out, we haven't been successful. Um, so we will... We're looking at the scope, we're looking at the brief to see if there's anything that requires to be changed before we go back out, um, and we would hope to be successful this time. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, just on the, the, the 3.6 with regard to the speed, speed surveys, I uh, mentioned we're going to have discussions with Police Scotland. Uh, can officers advise uh, when they expect that to be completed and when not these uh, discussions are, are, are bearing fruit? Because I know that in the past, we thought we'd be very reticent about having good milk for our loans. Yeah. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Councillor. Um, we had a very uh, positive meeting with Police Scotland in relation to 20 mile per hour. There is a speed limit of 24 miles per hour, where if it's the current speed is 24 or below, um, there is a good chance that a number of drivers will drive in the proximity of 20 mile per hour, which means that they don't require to do so much in the way of enforcement. However, if it, people are driving above that, there is the expectation that there should be potentially traffic calming that um, will work with the road geometry to reduce um, traffic speed. And that requires um, if potentially police enforcement and it's the level of enforcement that they are concerned about because like all of us, they have a limited amount of um, officers that be able to be available to carry out 
speed enforcement. However, we are working closely together with the police and we are looking for the best way forward. And so far, those conversations have gone well. Okay. Thank you. And just, just lastly, I apologise. Uh, just on item 3.5, with respect to the, 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 the cycling uh, proposals and the, the reserve schemes which identified, there wouldn't be a, a meeting if I didn't mention cycling at one point in time. Uh, just with respect to the, uh, the, the proposal for a cycle group between three hundred cars per round about, uh, they said talks here about land searches, purchasing land to widen the footway. I just want to obviously confirm that. My understanding would be that we'd be having a, a, a cycle path adjacent to the existing footway, not widening the existing one. I wonder if you could confirm that. Ma yeah, we've got that information. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, my understanding is it would be adjacent to the footway. However, um, that would require a piece of land that we would need to um, reallocate potentially. So we will look at different options and we'll be able to come back with more detail when we have tied out those land searches. Okay, so at the moment, it's adjacent to the whole we'll develop it as we go. Anybody else? Anybody agree? Yeah, just a couple of quick questions. So, just under 3.5 cycling walking the safer street. So, I just note that um, the said officers are currently progressing the design, and it mentions uh, the M75 cycle route through Guruk. So, I was just obviously uh, the ward councillors there have had many representations on that. There, there are a number of concerns and also with different ideas so I was just trying to explore as, as the three board councillors be able to have some input into that before we get to the final design because sometimes when it gets to committee it all seems too late uh, to suggest things so could we, could we have that discussion early on? Yeah, that's the first one and the second one is just under the Guru Park Lightning Pilot obviously we're heading into a kind of autumn months and it's going to start getting darker. So I just really want the time scale on, on that sort of lightning pilot. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Councillor. In relation to the liaison with um, members, we're more than happy to do that. And when we have an indicative design, we'll set that up so that we can have a discussion about um, the potential options for that. And in relation to the group park lighting, the design is now complete and installation is being programmed and hopefully that'll be imminent. Okay, okay. I just need a wee definition of imminent. <laughs> <laughs> We're in discussion with the contractor, so we hope it's in um, sort of three to four weeks that they'll be starting. Great, thanks. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No, any recommendations? Okay. 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 Oh yes, thanks. Thanks, convener. Um, so the share prosperity, as I've said before, is the UK government fund and Inverclyde has been allocated two point nine million in core UK SPF funding, along with six hundred and fifteen thousand towards Multiply, which is a ring fence programme to improve numeracy. Since presenting to a committee in June, the Degeneration team have worked with partners to prepare our local investment plan and develop an activity under the priorities community in place, supporting local business and people and skills. The report shows the summary of the type of activity that, and the indicative deliveries, deliverables which we seek to achieve, uh, reflecting our local priorities, and that uh, the full SPF budget of just over £3.5 million will be allocated. We've been working with the Glasgow City Region to prepare their investment plan, which reflects the regional economic strategy and their own local strategies. And the Glasgow City Region will present to their cabinet on the 30th of August, and then this Glasgow City Region intend to submit the shared prosperity investment plan on behalf of the eight member authorities to UK government by the 1st of September. The committee is asked to delegate the final preparation of this plan and the submission of the investment plan to the UK government by this date. Okay, Can't take any questions. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Jennifer? Oh. Uh, thanks, Michael. Um, I know this shared prosperity fund is meant to replace the European, different European social funds and different funds available for Europe. But I'm kind of concerned that this funding is only going to be over uh, from 22 to 25, Michael. Uh, a lot of the European projects are based over seven years, so I, I'm kind of concerned that 
this is going to see us looking at making kind of short term projects that you know strategic planning, we're not going to be planning for kind of you know things that probably suit the, the area and the community better. So that, that that's the concern, Mike, was with this short term kind of funding and we're looking at short term projects, is this still what we want? Because this is the measure not to what was promised uh, with the UK government we've left the European Union. Nowhere near matches the amount of funding we'll get from, mm-hmm. from European funding. So that that's just a concern. I just want to raise that. Sure. Oh, well. Through you, Kobe, um, recognising councillors' concerns, but the difficulty that we've got is that this is the allegation that will be made by the UK government, and that's what we've got to deal with. Um, of course, it would be ideal to have a five year programme or indeed a seven year programme, but the regeneration team have worked to come up with a series of interventions which are compliant with the the prospectus associated with the UK Shared Society Plan and there is no wiggle room. Uh, you will recall that in previous meetings I've indicated that there was not even the possibility of uh, buying money between teams or indeed carrying money over. The indications are that there is some relaxation towards that, but it's not clear. Um, this is a high level report at this moment in time to reflect the uh, investment plan that's been submitted by the city region. Um, and it does go into the level of detail that the committee would normally expect to get. But as we go through the delivery phase of it, we'll be providing regular updates to the committee. But Councillor Jackson's concerns are no. Stephen. Yeah, th- thanks, convener. I mean, obviously, I, I, I share the concerns outlined by Councillor Jackson. I would hope there will be continuing funding through, through this funding stream, and ideally, I'd like to obviously see more funding through this funding stream. But we've got to try and make the best use of the resources that, that are here uh, to ensure we get the, the, the biggest bang for their buck. And, and obviously, you've got to rely on the professional advice of officers in terms of the way, the way best way to allocate this funding. But I'm just going to ask that... Oh, yeah. oh, no. Oh, no. Technical issues. Boris put the plug on his cable. I don't understand how long you make your better than I
for the 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 Hello, can we check who's calling user two, please? Vice Council McCabe. Uh, thank you. Hello. Yeah, see if the probe doesn't over recess. Yep. Stephen, we're, we're going to find the recess to try and let Pope reconnect. Okay.
Hello, can Colin use a four identify yourself, please? Yes, it's uh, Councillor John Crozer. Right. I had issues there with the VPN. Yeah, thank you. That's fine, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll back, uh, except for Martin, uh, but we'll, we'll maybe just continue with this point back. So, favour, favour. So, we're on item number four, and Stephen, you were cut off in the prime. So, right. <laughs> yeah, sounds painful, convener. I, I mean, I think I'll just I, I'll, I'll paraphrase what I was saying. I suppose it's we we know we know we're going to face very very difficult decisions in the forthcoming budget and, and beyond that and um, investment in areas like employability and business support are, are, are obviously going to be areas unfortunately we'll need to look for for, for cuts. Um, just wondering um, if that has informed the proposals that officers have brought forward because it's obviously when our own resources are reduced and it's critically important we maximise the benefits that we get uh, from, from any external resources that we can attract. Okay, thanks, Ian. Sure. Do you convene our Councillor McCabe? Yes, we're aware of the, the tape challenges that we face within the Council's budget, and we've been aware of that with regards to the potential proposals that are before you. Um, we think that there's enough flexibility within the programme that we'll be able to plug in shortfalls in order that we maximise the opportunities for the, the people of Inverclyde. Thank you. Okay, Chris, Chris, sir. Yeah, thank you. I think it's, it's fair to say that we need to be putting three point five million pounds on the bus, yeah, the bus. But it's, it's we just have to work with what 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 we've got at the moment, and it's obviously well from the paper. I just want to confirm something about the actual the paragraph four point five. The table of rights. I think sorry, it's on the main outputs from the UK, UK investment in Inverclyde. Like your UK SPF. I'm just wondering, are these the outputs that are that are have come from the UK government? Are these our outputs based on the funding we've actually, we've actually got. Sure, thanks a lot. you can there. Um, the figures that are there are the ones that we have generated as a result of developing projects. You'll understand there's a lot more detail behind these, mm -hmm. but these are the indicators which have been developed by the Glasgow City Region for inclusion within the wider investment plan, and those are, that's why when we could have hundreds of indicators in the government, but these are the ones that have been identified by the city region. These are what were filled in, and they're notional allocations. Uh, ultimately, as it says in the report, we need to procure these works. And when I say procure, whether that be end of them, grant award, or direct award, that still remains outstanding, but that gives a notional allocation of the likely figures that we're going to achieve. Just, just in one of the figures, I just want to just get a sense check on it. Uh, I was wondering if it's a specific project or it's coming through to these general figures or if it's just a, a general general quote. We've got uh, communities in place, we're talking about rehabilitated land, the amount of rehabilitated land is 200 uh, square metres, which is 10 metres by 20 metres. That's about the size of my back garden. So I'm just wondering, 
is, is, is that really what, what, we're, what we do? Yeah, I like that. Oh, three, three, you can hear. I can answer. Oh. Okay, Jennifer, on you go. Sorry, Keynes. Hey, sorry, Stuart. Hey, thanks, convener. Um, these are indicative deliverables that have come through the, the projects and, and they are indicative. Um, so, yeah, that is a fairly small uh, project. So that's just one of the projects that are um, coming through as part of the communities in place. But it may be that it, um, there is scope to increase that deliverable um, as the project um, is further refined. <coughs> so it's it's come that way as opposed to us saying we're going to be to under square meters of the land. Just the fact this project we brought requires us to be to under square meters of the land. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just what's just, 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 seen it, I thought. It <laughs> just shows you. Okay, any other questions on number four? No? Okay, can we get a recommendation? Okay, three, three. Three. okay. Three. Three. number five is Port Wadlow Wharf Water. Sure. So they are a report, it's a very simple report, um, which seeks to use up to £20,000 to do some blue sky thinking, looking at the Port Glasgow lower quarter, taking it to see what can be done with it, because obviously the previous project is not affordable. What we're looking at is what could we look to do within Port Glasgow if there were a level fund round three, uh, I can reassure members that whilst the report says including a potential replacement for the Port Glasgow Town Hall, I would re emphasize including a potential replacement as opposed to I want to demolish it. <laughs> Do not want to demolish it. It's there for discussion, it's there for potentially looking at a wider scheme within that quadrant. And it is to try and make us shovel ready for potential funds that may or may not come forward in the future. It's a relatively modest sum out of the money which is currently allocated against the Port Glasgow Quarter, and it provides us with an opportunity to develop such a project. Happy to take any questions if you want. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Convener. This report's obviously caused a wee bit of excitement um, among some elected members and, and the, the local press as, as, as well. I mean, Port Glasgow Town Hall absolutely is a, a very important community asset. Uh, it's a fantastic town hall, um, a huge, huge main hall and, and lots of other rooms. So it's a, it's a great facility and a great asset to the community. And certainly, I wouldn't be supporting any... Uh, demolition and, and non-replacement of Port Glasgow Town Hall, so we absolutely need need a town hall in Port Glasgow. I don't think it's unreasonable to consider the future of the town hall, given, I suppose, the modern nature of the building and, and the, that general area as part of a potential other scheme, and I think it is important that we do have potential schemes available should funding, funding be, be coming our way. And that's maybe one of the criticisms in the past that we didn't have sort of developed schemes that we could move pretty quickly on. So I think it is important. But I think it's also important that we, we understand specifically in relation to the town hall what what the what the investment needs are in respect to the town hall. And I'm looking to Eddie maybe to sort of just give us an overview of of how much money we, we might have to invest in the town hall over over the coming years. To continue for it to be continue to be fit, fit for purpose. Thanks, convener. To you, um, I, I can't get figures off the top of my head. Although I, I think I can, we have spent quite a lot on the town hall in the last five to ten years, rewiring, roofing, windows. We have not addressed the clad, which is an area that does need um, investment and potential replacement. Internally, it probably requires a degree of upgrade. We have a, a current project for replacing the lift um, with a compliant version, um, and we're looking to refurbish the main hall floor in, in the near future as well. So um, I can't give you exact figures. It, it certainly will need investment in the, in the short to medium term, and as with all the councils the state, it has to be considered in terms of the context of the net zero ambitions and what that's likely to, to bring in terms of the challenges of making all of our estate meet a standard that's going to be fit for the future. And that'll be a huge, huge challenge. Just to just go back into the I'm presuming, Eddie, 
in the context of, say, giving it another, like, 30-year life or whatever, we're talking about millions of pounds of in, in, in investment, and that's got to be obviously considered in the context of the the many demands that are on the council's resort, reducing resources uh, just to maintain our core assets and our roads and our schools, etc. Yep, that oh, is in that order. In particular, you know, if you were to look at the net zero requirements to bring a building to a certain standard, it would be millions uh, for for a, a facility of that size. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thanks for that, <coughs> Chris. I think uh, I, I welcome this paper for the uh, for for the map developing a master plan in Glasgow Lower Quarter. I think it's welcome we, we are looking at close by thinking with respect to what we do here. It's just a different shade of blue. I suppose that we might be the case and avoid some of these things. I I, I think we, we do need to consider what we do with Lower Quarter. I think we need to think about how we actually. Re regenerate that whole area and as, as I think all options need to be on the table but I'm not convinced about Glasgow Town Hall and I think a lot of the people in Glasgow are not convinced of that but I think if we're going forward and looking at it it is important we do develop what is the cost going forward for the Town Hall, what would be the cost of, of building a suitable replacement and I think the concern of a lot of people would be that the suitable replacement might not necessarily match the aspiration in our size of the existing building. So I think it's important to, to take people along this journey with us if we're going down the route. So I say I do welcome the master plan. What I would like to maybe suggest to the committee, if, if it's possible, that looking at this particular area just in isolation might make give a situation where we, we might look at a development master plan for this area, but there's areas immediately adjacent that suffer the same issues with respect to what we call the need for regeneration. I'm specifically thinking about the, the area just across the street, the lower quarter, they'll say Princess Street, are going up to like Huntley Terrace, taking it in account the old uh, the exchange, uh, the telephone exchange and the, the spa. I think that's the area that we could probably extend this master plan into because looking at the the, the situation and that court, that court, the lower quarter there, it's been identified in this report and that, it looks very similar. And of course, it's, it's contiguous, so I think it'd be a good idea if we could extend it in, out. And taking account of that, I was just wondering if officers would, would confirm if we did that, whether or not we think we, the existing 20,000 budget within this report would be sufficient, <laughs> or whether or not it would be better to allocate a slightly more amount to enable that to happen. Sure, what was the rationale behind the, the area that we're looking at at the moment? Was there was consultation of the regeneration form? Three you know, there was an area which was identified during the Port Glasgow shedding mm -hmm. process. So it goes from Shore Street to Church Street and Princess Street and King Street. If members are minded to expand that geography, then that's within the width of the committee. But clearly the twenty thousand pounds that's been allocated as part of this is a high budget, recognising the challenges that we all face and it would not be sufficient to take based on the what things to cover cover the first Okay. Anybody else want to come in on that suggestion, John? Yeah, yeah, thanks. It's, it's, it's a comment. First, I want to thank the many officers for bringing this report to us. I mean, we have criticised about not having several development ready projects and whenever we're going to bring. So, what we're actually saying, we don't want the rest of the going to um, the UK level and up front. And what we're trying to do here is, is make sure that that project, if it's a shovel ready, that we can actually put in. Compliant bid because we know we've got problems with this one with regard to in, in the green up one with regard to including the quirky corner, including the all different things in it. So, and I think we should commend the officers to, for their proactiveness and actually think of it in front of them that allows us to give them the leeway to develop a plan that's going to be shovel ready should it be another level up in it. I can understand what Chris says. But we've got to make sure that anything we actually do is going to be compliant with the UK level law. That I mean, there's no use putting a bid in which isn't going to be recognised. What you want for officers to do is put in a bid <coughs> which ticks all the boxes for the UK level law. But, you know, and I know I'm not in a position to do that, but I'm hoping that through the a, a good officers that they're in a position to know exactly what ticks the boxes. And allows us to get money into the full class called Lower Corner. Uh, corner. And we know problems with property acquisitions, we know the problems with land So 
really fun for you. It's just many balls, such as the club. Take that quite the table to us and hold my place for you. That's an open. And we start like many stuff. I don't really have balls. And I want them to make sure that they are bad. And I'm, I'm, I'm really arguing and took a troll, but make sure we them to make sure they are bad and that they know it's going to get them. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I mean, as soon as, soon as we appoint consultants, I'd be very surprised if the consultants walked around the town. They didn't say, well, we should be looking at the other side of Princess Street as well into Hunt Huntley Terrace. I mean, since the charrette obviously was produced many years ago, the, the Sparrow's line empty and the, and the TSB Bank's line empty as well. So, I, I mean, I don't see any any reason why the, a wider area can't be looked at. I mean, it does mention in the report Princess Street and these 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 buildings are in Princess Street. So I don't I don't see any 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 reason why there, there couldn't be an expanded area. You've got to have some sort of limit eventually in terms of that, but I don't see why we couldn't be, be looking a, a, a wee bit wider than the, the actual square we were originally looking at for the for the new civic square area. And what the funded flat strip would fund that be contained within a twenty thousand pound allocate. So, so I suppose we're going to have to agree agree as a committee if we go to allocate more funding for that. And just on that, the docks was able to uh, at this moment in time uh, identify how much it costs to just widen the, the budget out slightly. To actually widen the, the scope, just I think I think uh, Stephen's point is to be at least. We don't want to be looking at the whole town centre, certainly if you start to bring it out, but I think this is, there is a drawing a line around to work that to the lower quarter and looking across the street and, and you see the fact that well, there's actually no real difference to what we see in one side of the street and the other side of the street. So I think it's important that we do actually look, bring that in. Maybe the consultants might say, well, actually, a different solution that will set the street, but I think it's important that we get it consistent as well. Um, uh, as much of a holistic approach as we can do. I suppose we'd also be able to, to provide uh, information. Would, would uh, say, for instance, a £30,000 budget be, be, be sufficient? I don't want to go fishing here, but I just want to make sure that we'll be able to give us some advice. Do you want to buy a on the one? No. Do you, Convener? Um, on the basis that we're looking simply at the opposite side of the street, to Kinsey Street, and we're not going up King Street, and we're not looking at the other side of King Street. It is only the, the area bound by uh, Shore Street in the, the north, uh, and then going down Kinsey Street, either side of Kinsey Street, as far as it gets to the church. Yes. And no further than that, and I believe that figure of about £30,000 would probably suffice. Okay, what about sort of things Thanks, Tamina. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the report in terms of that I've been calling for. It's not quite my special ops team that I'm looking for, but it is blue sky thinking in the means of, of, of trying to get stronger any projects that you know we're ahead of the game, not reacting when, when opportunities come to us. But I'm not sure what our 20 quid, the 20,000 quid is, is buying us here. Um, Councillor Lockheed mentioned consultants. Councillor Clockley talked about our officers doing things. I'm not sure what actually the 20,000 pounds is going to be. Going to, who is going to be spent by and for what? Because I think an important part of this, I'm happy to agree the funding, but I think we also need a new process here as well. Because if we are doing this and seeing this as a, a kind of a start of a blue sky thinking regime, um, then, then we need to know how we do that, how we do it well, how we learn from it. And if we don't, if we're not intentional with things like that, then then we could miss the opportunity, the very opportunity that we're trying to to. Um, Hardest with this particular decision. Sure. How the money spent? Do you convene the money was spent on external consultants? Right. Does it say that in the report? Have I missed that in the report? No. Right. No. Uh, it would be spent on external consultants. It would be uh, with a view to bringing together ideas as to how the spatial elements within the site could be event maximised. It would also identify potential costs associated with it, with a view. To not get to the point of being able to tick every box that Councillor Cockerty has identified because you'll recognise that there were changes between levelling up fund round one and levelling up fund round two. But it's taking us in that direction to have to, to use an Alan McClendon term, finesse the project uh, as opposed to having to start it from the beginning well advanced 
ready for final development in order that we could be in a position to quickly submit a level up fund type three bid. Okay. It's just even just for me that it's extended consultancy that we're, we're, we're fine here, yeah, like a capacity within our own officers, but capacity within our officers would be would be a, a, a gold standard side of us, but I guess we're maybe on the road to that rather than there at the moment. Through you can do you'll notice that the funding allocation is coming from us is from the existing lower quarter budget and it's not coming from the project based uh, funding allocation because we want to also maximize that opportunity. Okay, before we move on, just to make it quite clear to members, uh, the aren't members of the committee and the public can vote Glasgow and the regeneration forum and the community council, there'll be no discussion of the knock and down for Glasgow town hall. <laughs> right, okay. Right, okay, thanks very much. Uh, any recommendations? So, to just like to me. Yeah, yeah, right. In agreement with the Frankie Fund, we'll get the down from Frankie Fund and then give us the scope. Okay. Can you work with yeah, I was just I was just wanting to sort of um, correct Stuart, who appeared to mislead the committee there, because it actually does specifically state in paragraph four point one that's proposed that up to twenty thousand pounds be used to engage external support, etc. So it's in the report that proposed to engage external consultants. Can I just be a to officially apologise to the committee? Apologies, <laughs> accept the same. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right, okay, can we do recommendations? Great, great. Thank you. Okay, item number six is place based funding. Go. Sure. you can hear, um, the Scottish Government has allocated funds over a number of years to work in the village centres. Uh, funding originally manifested itself in Crown Build Centre funding and it's more recently come to its waste funding. Funding allocations for the current financial year are contained in the capital report, or should I say it in case I'm not accurate in my previous report. Uh, the allocation made in the current financial year amounts to five hundred eighty four thousand pounds in paragraph four point one six out the proposed distribution of that funding. Members recognising that this funding needs to be spent across the whole area and there are criteria for it. Uh, the suggestions there uh, as we provide a reasonable distribution can be our application. Thanks, Joe. Any questions for Stuart? Yeah, thanks. Even I want you to get funded with this. One of the important call points is call points who talk about you know we need to call points this and we need to call points that. And what we're actually seeing through the papers is a sort of myriad of we put funding streams that are around fence that are going to be spent here and going to be spent there. And it is difficult for even for us as councillors sometimes, but certainly for the general public to say, well, we're cutting back all this. But why are you spending money? I'll use the example of what we well planned. Um, and and I, I suppose we're actually seeing this more and more often, you know. So, We've already had a paper there on, on the level up fund. We've talked about earlier on the other funding. And it's just to try, for us as a member, something is difficult to try and get a handle on all the different pots of money that is coming in to attend my claim. I, I know it is difficult for me, you know, this place based funding, whether it was called something else in the past over the last five years, the capital regeneration funding, the town centre regeneration funding. And it's just, for, for me, I, I just think, try to get a handle on all the different funding elements. That, and, and sure, I don't know, it may be a case that you just say, well, Jim, you'll need to take your reception and find out exactly what we can apply for and, and what is ring fenced and what is not ring fenced. It's just a wee bit infuriating. We've got all these pockets of funding, and yet we're going to be caught with really difficult decisions that are going to affect all our, our, our constituents over the next couple of years. But that's not what I'm doing. I don't know if that's any strict comment or not. Do it right, hold on. So you can read that. Um, Council of Property makes a valid point. Um, it's important for training for our officers, whereby we're putting forward small schemes. You'll notice, for example, in the Kilgore uh, allocation, there was an allocation made previously of £75,000, which would have done, which would have done part of St. James' service, and clearly. 
our suggestion to members is that we follow that up in a second phase, which will complete St James's Terrace. Um, what I'm happy to do, convener, is to bring back our report, which identifies any of the place-based schemes, any of the people-based schemes. Um, there's obviously an outstanding agreement for a review on not all of the employability schemes, and, and that's something which will be coming back to the next committee, and we can tie up with... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll make sure that officers present a report that shows a summary of the current schemes that are available because members will recognise the very next report that's on the agenda is another short term uh, funding scheme whereby we've been asked to spend £584,000 uh, as a result of Omicron. So I'm um, happy to bring that back to you. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Any other questions, Robert? Still take my five point two on just report so to be able to find the content of the report, just in case that matters as a as a record of what we're looking at. That will be correct. Yeah, thanks. Uh, just a quick question. So, obviously, the, the towns and village funding has always went through the town regeneration forums. So, I'm just trying to explore if all these, you know, allocated funding has been through the town centre regeneration forums um, and approval given through there. So, I'm just concerned why it's kind of came to committee before it's went through the town centre forums first. Yeah. For you, convener, um, so I can draw members' attention to paragraph 4.1. You notice that there are a number of allocations made to Councillor Flynn for the town centre regeneration forum, so there is still an allocation being made for general funds. It's just the specific funds, rather than having to go through the town centre regeneration forums to get signage. For example, there will be uh, there will be consultation with the wider community. The town, the town centre regeneration forums can participate in that. But rather than the town centre regeneration or having to procure it, it's trying to make that a slender process. Okay, thank you. Paul? Oh. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, um, just more a question with a, a comment uh, with a bit of a question. Um, I welcome the proposals um, at 4.1, particularly for the coastal path improvements. Um, as I understand that that's a coastal path um, at Lunderson Bay and to Invercat. Um, which I know the local community will um, most definitely welcome. Um, I'd like to um, ask Mr. Jameson, you know, as part of that, whether we, we could um, look at what we could do to make the path more accessible for those with um, disabilities. Uh, but yes, I'm happy to look to see if we can make it more uh, accessible. Okay. Sure. Paul? Uh, thanks, Michael. Um, just to follow on on Jim's line, and I can I can see this here, what Jim's saying. I mean, we're over there in the SV, and we're going to take it for 10 minutes to have that stop, and we're certainly looking at different funding streams coming in for different things, and you drive into the end of the day, and you pass guys at the strike uh, fighting for wages to try and get themselves to that poverty. We've got a cost of living crisis, we've got food banks, we've got claims banks in and we've got, you know, we know things are going to get worse. I just, it baffles me, it really baffles me to sit here saying this amount of money getting spent on things with this. You know, to be absolutely honest, this isn't your priorities in this too. This isn't what we need. So it's a rant, Michael, well, nothing more than a rant. This is, we we're talking seven, eight hundred thousand pounds we've discussed over the last hour and money getting into things, you know, you know, just to get through this here, like in town centre signage, you know, pressure washing, thirty-five thousand pounds of pressure washing, forty thousand pounds for town, town centre signage. And maybe it's people who can't even keep their homes. You know, this funding is we've got a crisis going on here and we're sitting here doing this and it makes me mad to think. This is where this money is going. So it's not a question, it's just a rant, just following up Jim. Right. Um, <laughs> right. I just don't know, I quite agree that we are in a 
very difficult situation, but I suppose the thing is, we've always got to try and look to the future and, and try and improve the area, even in difficult times. And that's the, that's the, that's the balance that we've got to do. If we're always mitigating poverty to the extent that we've, we've spent all of and they're looking for regeneration and looking for, for getting what's called additional income into the area, additional jobs into the area, and making things. They will have a situation where we're, where we're always going, going spiraling down. Yeah, I understand this is what you have to do, but we always have to spend money improving areas. Just come back in the middle there. I absolutely agree with the same. But the bottom line is, you know, is this really the best way to tackle poverty, systemic poverty? And then we're like, you know, I know we're going to have back here. So uh, you, you talk about short-term, long-term projects, but this tune has been in the same state for the past 50 years with all these different projects. We're not tackling the root cause of systemic poverty in this area. The barriers, the structural barriers are in place to get people out of poverty. And we can do all this to the cows come home. We really can. We can talk about short-term investment and long-term investment, but none, none of it's ever worked. This tune is the better than it was 50 years ago, so it's not... And there's plans in place, and we're just not looking at these banners, we're not even looking at the break and doing, and we'll continue to look, get funding for these type of projects. It's not going to do that, so it's not. Okay, any other comments? No. Maybe the conditions? Maybe. Okay, item number seven is the Omicron business support prevention program. Same map. I can take that with support from Stuart. Yeah. Okay. Should we work yeah, it? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, apologies to game chambers. Uh, it was a typographical error with paragraph group on one. It's clear it says 579 dash dash dash. It should say 579 000. The This report sets out also proposals in respect of £579,000 that was previously allocated to council by the Scottish Government as a result of COVID-19 Omicron variant introduction. Uh, this is something which we officers thought that we had a delegation for, but the reality is that we didn't have a delegation for it, and this is why it's report members at the moment in time. You'll recognise from paragraph 4.1 that a number of business interventions which are set out, these business interventions have been developed in consultation with the uh, regeneration team along with the business community, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, thanks. Sure. Steele? Yeah, I mean, I'm just mindful of the, the, the sort of comment the steward made, which alluded to this particular report about here's a sum of money and we've got to spend it in the way in which the government tells us. But, I mean, Omicron obviously had a a big impact on local businesses. There was a lot of support given at the time, but obviously it's had a, a lasting impact. And you can understand why this money potentially is there to help businesses um, recover from from um, Omicron and sort of a growing development. Who am I to question all the, the, the various interventions that are outlined in the report? But we do know, and it's increasingly obvious, particularly through the local press, the extent that a lot of local small businesses are struggling at this point in time on the impact of the sort of cost of living crisis directly impacted by well, obviously increases in, in energy costs indirectly impacted by the fact that their customers are suffering um, increased costs which mean they might be more reluctant to, to go out to local cafes and restaurants and shop etc. Is, is there no way that we can look at using at least some of this um, money to actually support those local businesses through this very, very difficult period. So, sure. you can hear, um, members will recognise that during the pandemic, there were a number of business interventions which were developed to support local businesses, whether that be furlough, rent, and other things. The proposals which are set out before members today complement the existing interventions that we have, Councillor McCabe, and I think that there are opportunities that we can use other funds that we have uh, already in place to support the interventions which you're alluding to. Well, if that's the case, I think it would be useful for us to to get a report on, on, on that and, and how we are seeking to support uh, local businesses. I mean, obviously, 
I know there's a, going to be a report um, coming up to policy and resources, and we're going to be looking at how we can further support the, the wider community. But in terms of businesses, it would be good to get a bit more detail on how potentially we can support those those businesses that are really struggling. I mean, we've seen, even in the past week, we've seen examples in the Green Telegraph of businesses telling us they're on the verge of closure. Yeah, okay. We'll do that. Yeah, if I wants to come in, convener. Well, Thanks, convener. Thanks, councillor. Um, yeah, I'm happy to bring a report up. The team, as it says in the report, we've just um, recruited a team leader, and one of the, the first things that they've been doing is reviewing all our funds that we've got and seeing how um, we can both promote them and maybe make them uh, more fit for purpose. So that's a, a, a role that the team are uh, going through just now, and that's with our existing business support and business support grants that we have. Um, so, yeah, happy to bring a report up to kind of detail in what we have on offer. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, thanks, great. Really welcome to the report. Uh, I see a lot of exciting things happening there for supporting our, our local businesses and also, uh, uh, particularly number four, uh, using the self-employed as a career option. You know, sometimes it's really great to empower our community to take things into their own hands and create their own jobs. It's just I've got just a question on delivery. Obviously, it said you've been uh, swap views at local businesses on what they actually need, but it was just to explore uh, who's actually delivering these sessions. And is there a, are we looking to some of our local businesses to deliver? So, if we, for instance, if we look at setting up a website, so not only can we support others, but we could actually employ someone, extend an uh, individual business to help setting up and the one to one mentoring. So, are we looking at the sort of business? Community to maybe provide some of these sessions. Thanks. Sure. Sure. Uh, through you, Kavina, uh, happy to explore all, all opportunities. Clearly, what we're doing this afternoon is established in the principal of St. Kingston Quinn, uh, and doing it within him quite is very much a focus in trying to maximise the opportunities for local businesses to support local businesses. Great, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, give me a, a way, a similar point. You know, obviously, this, this money could be circulated in recruit and spend it well and spend it cleverly. Obviously, I'm always promoting the third sector, but obviously, business needs the needs the business as well, as Councillor McCabe has said. So, I'm just hoping officers will have a, a, a wide eye to look at how we can best spend this money within the third sector and business sector within recruit, which is previously said. Thank you. Thanks, Okay, Okay, Sorry, I was struggling to come off mute there. Thank you, Convener. Um, this is a slightly unusual report insofar as we create a food service plan on an annual basis, um, and we usually just sign it off at head of service level, and that's been okay with the Food Standards Scotland. However, because this plan covers a significant part of the COVID recovery process, it felt it was appropriate to bring it to committee. On the plan itself, it represents the second part of the recovery process, the initial part being from October 21 through to March 22, albeit we had a brief hiatus with the Omicron variant. The service, just for your information, is being audited by Good Standards Scotland next week. So that's, this is quite timious, and I will bring a report on the outcome of that to committee in due course. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Martin. Any questions, Martin? No. Okay, my recommendations. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay, item number nine is a property assets management say, report, the public department of report. Ed, you can show up. Yep. Thanks, convener. Um, the report is fairly straightforward. It deals with two buildings that. Um, have been and currently are being um, used as decant for capital projects. Um, the Neil Street Children's Home building will become vacant in the very near future as Cross Hill is just about handing over. Um, and the former Glenbury Children's Centre building uh, is now no longer in use, so it has been in use for decant for Helen Children's Centre and then as storage, but we now know have no longer had any use for it. So, we're seeking committee authority to declare, declare the asset surplus and place them on the market for sale. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, they should work on something. We recognise that the refugee situation within is, is something which we're again addressed within the claim. Um, we have had discussions with both Scottish and UK government about a potential solution 
uh, for New Street. Um, and if we do come forward, then that would mean that we would be looking to implement the, the recommendations in the report. But if they don't come forward, then we're just putting down a marker to say that if uh, they're unsuccessful, then we would follow the recommendations. Just for some call. No, it's okay. It's just uh, as professional. Right, okay. Paul? Yeah, Mike, it's just to see if we can maybe take Len away and kick it in the next committee. Um, there has been a community engagement, as you know, the other board about a possible uh, community use. So it's just to see if we can exhaust the discussions with the community before we put this out set up. So yeah. if that's agreeable. We're going to have to support that. Everybody else does. Anybody else want to come from? No. Real Kingston. Next committee. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, it's time. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can we agree the main recommendation? Yeah, just the fact that we're agreeing to new streets uh, and the preparing and sitting in the Yeah, for next month. Okay. Okay, the item 10 is a TRO. People who are going to see what happened with Sure, so um, uh, you hear uh, with a previous agreement on the 16th of June to hold a special meeting to hear an objection to this TRO. Um, that objection has been withdrawn, so I think this is the moment required. So it's really just to let the committee know which will be why we're having some things. Okay, that's very good. Okay, now this is the agenda to help in private.